There's been a lot of talk about concussions and traumatic brain injuries in both professional football and in college and high school sports. And the University of Cincinnati's Hurt Lab is doing research to help protect these athletes. I visited with Professor Eric Noman to learn more about biomechanical engineering. It's actually a very new field. We're kind of that first generation where people actually have biomedical engineering degrees and are faculty members. Basically, you have to pull together all the different engineering disciplines and then adapt them to uh, solving problems in life sciences. So most of what we do is to try to help patients. My lab in particular focuses on uh, injury, human injury. And so we're the Hurt Lab and uh, uh, it's human injury research and regenerative technologies. Players that take sometimes uh, a, a thousand head impacts over the course of a season will show changes in their brain that are very similar, if not worse, than people that are diagnosed with concussion. And so you typically have five or 10% of the players are diagnosed with concussion, but up to 80 or 90% show the same kinds of changes as the season goes on. And they're not diagnosed with, with any problems. They don't come out, they don't rest. That's when we realized that preventing the injury meant we had to have better helmets. So we started studying helmets and essentially what we're looking for are helmets that can absorb energy better than, than previous models. The biggest study that we've ever done, we looked at all the different helmets we could find and where they, they really didn't do well is on the backside. So they can absorb 80, 90% of the impact most locations on the helmet, except the back, the, the visus and the speed flex were the only ones that got over 50% of the impact. The helmets typically are a rigid shell, more or less rigid shell, and then padding material underneath. Sometimes a couple layers of padding material. Joe Burrow's helmet's a little bit different than, say, the, the classic Rydell, or if you go further back, um, some of the early helmets. Uh, what makes the, the Vices helmet a little different, this is one that's designed for linemen. Um, Joe Burrow's helmet is a little bit different, but the same basic idea. The shell actually deforms, and there's padding in there as well. So they're trying to take advantage of two separate energy absorption mechanisms. Now, what's interesting is that they actually have a double shell structure. So in principle, they could, they have shell, padding, shell, padding. They could actually have four regions that absorb energy. They primarily take advantage of two, but that's one more than most helmets. This is a, this is a hybrid three crash test dummy, it has accelerometers inside of it. And, uh, and that's, that was a great help to us. But an even bigger help was this hammer. Um, it's a modal impulse hammer. Back in the 80s, you might not be old enough to remember, but back in the 80s, Department of Defense got in trouble for buying $10,000 hammers. That's the hammer. Like, it's, it's a fancy hammer, and they use it to hit nuclear weapons. We use it for helmets. And so what it does is it records the force that you use to hit the object. And that's something that nobody else does. Nobody knows the input force and the output acceleration. And so by, by having both input and output, we can figure out how much of the impact is actually getting uh, absorbed or mitigated by the helmet. So Sean's been a student in the lab for a while, and he's an expert in a lot of things, uh, computational modeling, he's making computer models of the helmets, um, but he needs data to, to uh, calibrate and validate those models. And so it turns out he's also excellent at swinging hammers. So that was in the range of the highest impact. If you were unhelmeted, you'd definitely be knocked out, KO'd, say goodnight. Let's just look at the linear acceleration. So linear acceleration here for the helmeted impact was, let's just say 37. And if and that should be 37 G's. Mm -hmm. So G, 37 G's of acceleration. And now if I take off the helmet and deliver the same impact or a similar impact without a helmet, it's going to be a little, the acceleration of center mass of the head is going to be a lot larger. So this was actually about one Newton second less than previously, but the acceleration was 225 G's. Wow. So the helmet does a lot. They keep getting better and better, but like I said, this one has a, a double shell technology, which we're a big fan of, but they're using only one of the shells and some of the padding to absorb the energy. 
we'd like to see them eventually use all four layers to, to do that energy absorption. But it, but it takes time because most people, you, you can't actually measure right now the force that occurs on the field. And so that's something that we're trying to figure out is can we make a smart helmet that will actually measure the force? Because when you, once you have that, then we can design helmets for pros, college, high school, middle school, that actually absorb all of the energy or you know, 95, 98% of the energy. Right now, um, we're leaving a lot on the table.